This video will look at the first questions that anyone wanting to use a BBS HD mid-drive motor have to answer, which are, will it fit and will it still be rideable? It's also one of the more tricky things to do. It's hard to describe just in words and blurry photos of bike frames don't really show the things you need to consider. So I've borrowed a few 3D models and made some of my own to help you decide whether the BBS HD will work with the frame you have or help you select the best frame for what you want to achieve with this motor. If we look at the BBS HD, you can see that it has the motor housing, the controller and the reduction gearing. The crankshaft of the bike is replaced by the one built into the BBS HD. This crankshaft runs right through the bottom bracket of the bike. The BBS HD itself is locked on with a locking nut and this essentially remains the same with the new M65 version of this motor. The very first question to ask is does the frame have a British thread bottom bracket? If it does, then you can proceed to other considerations. If not, you'll need an adapter which may or may not exist. If you look at the examples here, you can see what I mean. The tubes represent the bottom bracket shell for a few of the different sizes you can find. The 34.8mm British thread fits the BBS HD perfectly. The next one here is the 42mm BB30 standard, and the last one here is the 46mm PF30 standard. There are adapters readily available for this particular type for certain. If there are red flags raised at this point, I'd probably be asking myself if I really want to use this frame. The second thing to consider is how far you can rotate the motor up toward the down tube. Or in other words, how low will the motor hang on the bike? The motor pivots on the bottom bracket. Notice how little room there is between the axle and the motor for the frame to go. Any more material than this on the frame and the motor will not fit at all without modification to the motor casing or frame. On a hardtail bike, you can rotate the motor and have it sit close to the down tube. The vast majority of hardtail bikes can have a BBS HD installed with a minimum of fuss. If you look at this Reynolds hardtail mountain bike frame, you can see that the motor is able to be rotated fairly high on the down tube to give a decent ground clearance to the motor. You can see it again with this frame. The motor can be rotated quite high onto the down tube, again giving good amount of ground clearance. Now let's look at a few downhill frames. This first frame illustrates the issue that a lot of downhill frames have where the BBS HD strikes the bend of the down tube. This is quite a popular choice of geometry for these frames, so you will encounter it a fair bit. The motor hangs quite low, although it might be okay if it's only really ridden on streets or light trails. It can get way worse like this Trek Session frame. Due to the shaping of the tubes, there is no physical way to have the BBS HD do anything other than point straight down. Some frames are just not going to work. This frame though is called the Uno Ever and I was able to get the BBS HD to rotate in a much better position with this frame. It's not perfect and you can still get better, but out of the models that I was able to scrounge together, this one was the best. It also looks like it has a British threaded bottom bracket. I'm not expressly trying to put people off using downhill frames with the BBS HD and I will link to a list of downhill frames that are known to work. It's just that you need to be aware that you won't be able to pick up any old downhill frame and expect it to fit because based on the examples I've shown, results are going to vary quite a bit. I have my BBS HD on a fat bike frame, which are usually hardtail bikes, so generally there are no issues with the motor hanging down. Fat bike frames are a special case though in that they usually require the largest axle width of the BBS HD at 120mm. Which brings us nicely to the third thing to consider and that is the bottom bracket width you will need to use and if you will need to use any kind of spacers to ensure a proper fit. The BBS HD comes in three axle sizes to accommodate different widths of bottom brackets. The most common size is for 68 to 83mm wide bottom brackets. This covers the vast majority of hardtail bikes. There is also a 100mm and a 120mm version to use on mountain bikes, cargo bikes and fat bikes. But which ones should you choose? If we look at a standard hardtail frame, you can see how the BBS HD fits nicely into the bottom bracket all the way through. It's secured on with a lock ring. As a general rule, you should simply measure your bottom bracket and pick the size that works, which sounds simple and it can be. Where issues start to occur with the BBS HD is when you look at the more exotic frames, such as those used for downhill and enduro riding, as well as the fat bikes. And the easiest way to show this is with an example. So let's take a look at this downhill frame. You can see how the way the casing hits the chain state that it will leave a significant gap. This gap has to be filled with a spacer. If we look at the example, 
for my specialized fat boy. Even though the bottom bracket on my fat boy is 100 millimeters, I need the 120 millimeter version of the BBS HD, or the axle would not be long enough to allow the lock ring to be threaded on. So I'm actually using a 10 millimeter spacer on my fat bike in the gap that's created by the gearing casing hitting the chainstay. If it looks like you will have to do this kind of spacing with the frame, then you will also need to look at the knock-on effect that this will have on your chain line. Which brings us to the fourth thing to consider, which is chain line. For people that don't know, chain line refers to the way that the chain runs from the sprocket on the crankshaft to the rear cassette. Ideally, you want it to line up with the middle of the cassette so you can access the highest gear and the lowest gear with the least possible strain on the chain. Let's look at this example, which is a hardtail. The motor goes on with no spaces, and you can see that the chain hits the middle of the rear cassette. I've drawn a triangle over the top to represent the path range the chain will follow as it's moved by the derailleur. Now let's look at some of the downhill bikes we looked at earlier. You can see that the one bike where the motor position was sort of okay is pretty much ruled out now by the horrendous chain line, which was caused by the need to use a spacer, so the motor housing was able to clear the chain stays. The frame that I found called the Uno Ever actually has an okay chain line. You can see it doesn't line up perfectly in the center, but there is potential because there are some things you can do if you have this kind of chain line. And depending on how you want to use the bike, you can rearrange the rear cassette or perhaps use an internal hub. Hopefully this does help to explain the main questions that you should ask yourself before contemplating any BBS HDE bike conversion. Thanks for watching. Cheers.